welcome back to the uh, Gentleman Ultras YouTube channel. I'm Richard Hall, as always, just talking through the morning papers and looking at Gazetta here. I mean, I mean, it's all going to be about Inter, isn't it? It was always going to be that today. I'm not really going to go through the headlines today because it's more important in some respects to talk about Inter, but also to give credit to Juventus because after it's this is a bit more of a personal one for me, if that's okay. Um, you know, when I was a kid. I'm like, Going back, I'm 40 now, so going back to 1988, we had like Sky B at home, was very lucky for that. And my father used to, didn't like football, and uh, brought him back a, an Inter shirt from Milan, um, just totally randomly. And that was it then, he was sort of born from there. And this whole obsession goes on from there. But and So very, very, very briefly, I was lucky that Trapattoni squad with uh, the three Germans, Matthias and Zenga, were my absolute heroes. And um, you know, to, to win that title was incredible. But... We were sandwiched between two amazing sides, an Napoli side and, and Milan. And Milan's the best club squad that ever existed, in, in my opinion. Um, and so that side now, that inter side, it's almost like a cult story, like the Samp one, years later. And so it would never felt like it was the beginning of anything. And you fast forward and through the Moretti years, you know, so many false dawns. We've seen the side with Ronaldo, we've seen the side with you know, so many different ones you can pick. Um, and they've all been um, possible title winning squads um, and they've all failed and it's as simple as that you know they, they didn't come up to where they should have been um, and so throughout that journey there's been so many years of sort of um, hurt but also so much you know so many glorious seasons as well that have, uh, that have just resonated really in, because of that and so then you fast forward to sort of uh, you know the early two thousands and you know this is when I started going out to Milan and I remember being on the Curva Nord when Inter eventually um, lifted that Scudetto, um, the official one that is in two thousand six seven against Torino after a three 0 win, incredible six hours in the Curva, and you felt then yeah of course there was certainly something beginning and that was the only other time that it felt like this. But you have to say that was with the absence of Juventus and you know after that yeah Rome of course problems. Um, and Inter went on and it culminated between that four year period in 2010 uh, with the treble winning squad um, I, at that point I wrote an article saying look this is probably the end of an era not the beginning of an era and for once unusually I was actually right because Moratti certainly didn't see it like that and he saw that this squad with some ageing characters Milito, Cambiasso, you know, Eto um, he had years left to play but not all of them and in the end they um, you know I remember being with my wife at San Siro and we were watching Brescia under Rafa Benitez the year after in November. It was cold, it was empty, it was turgid, and you could tell it, 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 they weren't with him, it had gone. Um, and so it ended in that sense. It, it ended then, and, and that, that, that sort of situation um, got worse and worse and worse. And for the last decade, there's been not enough moments of general pleasurable moments and we've seen Juventus and this is what I alluded to at the start of this Juventus have been absolutely dominant they've been superb they've been brilliant they've completely re they were reborn they look at the stadium look at the way they the marketing team look at the way they they, they thought about the league okay you can say it went over the top now with the Super League but it was always geared towards being elite that was it winning the Champions League they didn't win it but it was close and you know they've been the ones that everyone thought were just never going to be caught and now for Inter to do this and let's be honest they've, they're like a Formula 1 team they've copied the blueprint they've just looked at that and thought that's, that car works this season we just had a better driver it's simple as that there's no no real thing in it and Inter squad is strong it's better, they, you know Beppe Marotta and Antonio Conte deserve massive massive credit and it is it is where you know it's a culmination of something that's been hard worked Hard, sorry, they worked hard for. You know, you've got to look credit Suning as owners. They've been fantastic, and they brought us to a situation now where you know this is this is the important bit. It feels like it's the beginning of something and not the end. Of course, it, it needs investment. Of course, the ownership situation needs to get sorted out. But if it is, and if it is sorted, then they back Conte. This could be for me the 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 start of something where let's not be honest. Let's be honest. Sorry, we. It's not something that Inter are going to dominate, but they'll be in a battle now with Juventus one and two, and that could we could see that for the next ten years. And for me, as an Inter fan, from what all I've just said, it's so promising. So, this this Scudetto victory, 
this, uh, which in the end, yes, and this, you know, is, is incredible because it actually gives hope, it gives purpose. And, and like I said, I've been a long time suffering following this, this side. Uh, but to actually look and see a project that's something that we can compete for the next 10 years or so is incredibly exciting. And so for that, it's glad to say, and for, for me. Okay, chat now. <laughs>